It is a dark age. A bloody age. An age of war. The gods are cruel, and we are their playthings. But this is no game. It is ceaseless war, with the old world its prize. Many seek the path to victory, but only one can stand glorious over all. From the Badlands come the Orcs and Goblins, a green tide of brutal creatures that must be stopped. In Sylvania, the dead rise again. The Vampire Counts march forth. Dwarf kingdoms, long thought diminished, are resurgent under their high king. And at the old world's heart stands the Empire. Karl Franz must prove worthy of the Warhammer. Changing taint, despoils all before it. Only the strongest will endure. War is upon us. It is unending. Total War Warhammer. Now it's been almost at the near beginning of my channel a request that I would play Total War. And I've also had many people say that they do enjoy the fantasy side of my channel. And I said to myself, let's combine the two. And though I know that Total War 2 and the newest DLC, the Vampire Coast, where pirates and vampires mix come together. I don't have Warhammer 2 and I'm not sure how well this is going to play on my channel. So we are going to do it a little different to see how much you like it and to see if perhaps there are other vampires on the coast that are interesting. After all, I am the one that too does like to have the the armor on all the magics and why not combine that at all with the vampires on the coast of Museum? Now, I understand that if you are new to this game, the word Musillon doesn't tell you anything. But you can already see here from the top right that this game has is modded. Several mods have been installed, like the better camera mod, but more importantly, the minor factions mod. And I will be able to play as a new campaign in the old world as factions you normally cannot play. Hence also that these factions now slightly overlap with, unfortunately, the proper... Very nice cinematic that shows the factions. But we will be playing as a vampire faction on the coast, not over here in the east of Sylvania, as was in the intro. We will not be playing as Manfred or the von Karsteins. No, we will be playing as Musillon, surrounded by Bretonia. And uh, surrounded by Bretonia, we will have, unlike the von Karsteins and unlike Manfred, no natural expansion territory. We will not have Castle Drakenhof with its crazy gold income. We will be playing the most difficult vampire faction within Total War Warhammer. Now, I will be playing at heart because I am not an expert in this game for sure. And don't worry, I know you see Heimlich Kemmler here, but there's a reason why he's here in this faction. I, and I think uh, coding-wise it is needed that... Uh, Legendary Lord enter the faction, but as you can see, we also start with the Red Duke, the true Bretonian Lord that did not want to die. So, we are gonna go with this faction, we're gonna play on hard, and we are gonna try and expand our empire in this world. 
the Lich Master they call him. The wandering necromancer who searches for lost lore and dark secrets across the world. While traveling around the borders of Bretonia, he heard of news of undead walk in the cursed lands of Muzion, which prompted him to pay a visit to seek the source. Arriving here, he found the revived Red Duke rising to power and gladly offers his assistance in subjugating the holy lands of Bretonia. So, here we are with the Red Duke. This night. And this is my true vampire. And as a vampire, he will be very good in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but also in magic, and I do like that combination. I also like, for instance, some of the blue line with, for instance, Undying Hold with Replenishment. Or, for instance, the, uh, where is it? Um, the doo -doo, gotta find that first. Uh, Lightning Strike is also a pretty good ability, I think. So I probably will take a little bit of blue, uh, a ton of yellow for fighting, and of course some magic, but probably not much further than Gaze of Nagash and Raise the Dead. I don't think I will, will perhaps, well, Wind of Death is a really good spell, so we'll probably take them on as well. But And of course we're gonna put him on a Zombie Dragon. On the other hand, we have Heimerich Camelot over here, who actually starts with Thrall Master, allowing us to, uh, well, create a little bit of better zombies at first, and he is going to go definitely down this line and is going to get us all these lovely spells there are um, on the necromancy side. So we are playing as Musillon, and Musillon is kind of a difficult faction. Why? Well, it started as a minor faction in the form that it only has one of the minor settlements, and without Lyonnais, I can't give commandments about what should happen in this region, and thus my vampire corruption is already lowering as I can't give commandments. Commandments are an extra bonus that you can apply over, over to your total province. And as you can see from the vampire corruption going down over here, our populace is partially human and partially vampiric. And that's why it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Whereas in East Slovenia, which is somewhere here in the fog of war, the populace is fully vampiric. Of course, they, are, they have some human slaves in order to drink the blood from, but all are in agrees with it. Here, well, we don't even have that. This is really just a difficult start. Uh, from the very get-go, we're gonna go for the Book of Archon. There are four books of death, uh, each gaining to new technologies. And this one is for new skeletal warriors and what have you not. I need those because, as a minor faction, I can only build bloody skeletons. For these better things, I need an armory, and I don't have that. And I kind of like to have the gates because... People are going to be knocking on my door. On the other hand, we could do risky and kill it. But don't forget, we are instantly at war with Bordelot. That is just the way we start. We don't start, however, at war with the king of Bretonia, which is Luan Lianker. What is your message, tomb scum? Speak it now, so my lady can reject its unholy words. But I have a chance for a non-aggression pact. But unfortunately, he rejects that. That's unfortunate. Um, I do want to take down Lyonnais, but I also would like to keep myself alive. So there is a little bit of that. We're going to stand over here in the Bordelos borders. And we're going to see if we can do a little bit of raiding. Now, you can already see that I had some red lines coming about that I was going to suffer attrition. But right now, that's no longer the case. We're going to give Heimler's troops to him so that the rating will be a little bit better. There you go. 44 instead of 22. That's really good. And we're going to make use of Heimler's ability that, well, our skeleton units come with more experience. So we are going to raise the dent with our necromancy. That is the idea over here. Um... And then hopefully we will be able to fight Bordelo off. Well, Bordelo is no easy because this is also a legendary lord. Trust me, this is not an easy power. Moreover, public order up to plus 10 based on vampire corruption. That is a general thing uh, of vampires. And we have Lich Master. Upkeep for necromancy heroes, which is very nice and raise death costs a little lower. But that is all the bloody power that we have. And yes, unfortunately the dynastic name, the, you don't see the picture of the Red Duke. There is no true big picture of the Red Duke, unfortunately. Um, that is a start, so what else is Total War Warhammer besides, as you can already see, vampires, magic, and 
of fighting. Is it all going to be a generic you bump into each other and it's done? No, it's real-time strategy combat. And that is why we're going to play this game. And hopefully you will be intrigued by it as well. And uh, yeah, first, what I like to do, what I managed to do in a, a playtest of this, um, I've died three times, so that's also quite possible. But I've also been able to actually uh, secure a Quentin over here earlier in, in, in the thing because they don't have a lot of protections and Bordelon then pieced out. No. But I can't handle the Bordelon army without additional Otherwise. forces. So we are going to... Oh. Yeah. Going to go with these guys. Now, why are we going to go with Skeleton Spearmen over Zombies or Skeleton Warriors? It is not just to do with the fact that the stats of these guys are slightly better. Because they're armored and they're shielded. And you can see already that their speed is a little higher. Their melee attack, their melee defense. Everything is better for Zombies. But the main thing why I want to take these is because they're shielded and anti-large and charge defense against large foes. We are surrounded by Bretonia. Now, you have to gonna have to believe me that they love to ride on horseback. Spearmen are very good against horseback armies. So, that's why we are using them. And, uh, the problem with the undead is the undead have no ranged units. Whoa! There they are, and I'm gonna flee out of this one. He's already on my ass! I had, I was been uh, been raining and he doesn't like it, and I am fleeing so far away and I'm not sure if I can reach Muzion back. Well, rough start, rough start. Uh, we can reach it. Okay. Now you can see this little red circle over here, and he can't penetrate the red circle unless he starts really sieging me up. So. Ooh, and that's why I believe uh, we might just be I safe enough of this. But yeah, this is a painful army. Now, these guys are anti-large, so that's not as problematic as we do not have that many large. But that army, as you can see from the auto-resolve, much of it was red. I would have been smacked to pieces. I have just a way more smaller army, and I don't have uh, better quality units. So, hence this happens. And now I also had a turn uh, in which I did not recruit. And I don't know why, but this lady is, star is being a pain in the ass as well. Which I don't particularly prefer, but uh, apparently... She she is I changing currently the winds of magic for me. And those and she comes from here, from Baston. Too rot. Yes, the time is right. Yeah, I wish I could attack Leonette, but that is a dangerous undertaking. But I think it will be the thing that we will be doing. So we created a harbor, and with that harbor we have a little bit more income. Uh, this I won't upgrade because, frankly, I can't build these troops without armory, so it's kind of pointless. Besides, uh, yeah, I really need these walls in order to have a good garrison over here. Otherwise, these guys will smack me to pieces. Because I do have, for a small settlement, I have a very large garrison. You can see it's even larger than the capital. So that is what the only thing that is in your advantage. In this uh, in this setup, uh, yeah. Let's see once again. Can we convince you now that you have your? Uh, so, do you come to Bretonia's friend or enemy? Well, I come as somebody. Awesome, non-aggression pact. I'll take that. Thank you very much. That is... This guy over here is Luan Leonco. He's a legendary leader and he is a, the king of Bretonia. And he can unite these lands very quickly if he so desires it. And that is, of course, something I do not like, actually, personally. But something that I cannot prevent entirely. Why does that cost three turns for zombies? Oh, because, of course, the local recruitment is already at its limit. Right. Um... Yeah, I do really would like to take Leona. It is a difficult, difficult fight to take Leona. So, if we can do it, I do not know. Uh, it is something, however, that is foremost on my agenda. There we go. You will give me nine additional skeleton units. Bring me up to 70, so I need three more after this. All right. Mm, 
What are you going to do? He is uh, using a hero, which have independent actions from you, who can try and, and uh, well, assault units, as you can see there, or tear down buildings and all kinds of nasty, nasty things that you really don't want to, uh, you, uh, to happen to you. But it's uh, one way he can spend cash and be a nuisance to me. Oh. Coron is getting sieged, probably by the green skin rebellions that Coron immediately suffers from. Which is very nice. Now, another thing that we can do is try to take down Estalia over here, um, but that's uh, pretty far to the south, so I'm not too keen on that right now. Also, we have some serious unrest issues. Uh, difficulty level, lack of corruption, yet yeah, because of the vampiric corruption being minimal. That is not good, and as Kamli himself here says, I need more minions. Now, you have a stack of 20. Leona! Undead creature. Are you bold, foolish, or just arrogant? We gotta declare war on you before you get any alliances, because you do tend to get those. Oh, shoot, really? I can't do it because this turn because he was in the wrong stance. Well, that's unfortunate. There we go. Get more units. And of course, Coron won't like it, but currently we have another aggression pact and that is going to help me. Oh, negative growth. Well, luckily that doesn't really, really matter. Artois and Coron have declared war upon each other. That is just good for me. That means that... Bretonia is more unstable, and now you will go into your normal stance, and we are going to try and siege you out. And as we siege, we do not suffer corruption, so that is also pretty good. Uh, this is going to take four turns. Mm. I'm going to do it with this, two turns. Because we already have negative, so we can't have more than this. I need a little reserve, so I can't have... I'm already fielding a larger army than I'm actually allowed by income. So that's why I have to be quick about this war. Here, I can have it only one more turn up, and that's why I am like, I can't have... I, I need to be careful with what I do. Uh, 50% of your movement. There we go. And then you can go into raiding stance. Immune to attrition. There we go. No income because we are sieging. But it does put the armies together. So that we will have the benefit of both of these armies. While we are attacking Leona. So, next turn... The first attack on Leona is gonna take place. As it grows, I can tell. You come thinking to bargain, but I have already won. And he already wants a peace treaty and is willing to offer payment, and I'm gonna say no to that. I'm already strength rank 1 because of these overpaid armies, but that is what we like to see. They're already afraid of us. And they're a skeleton bones. Unfortunately, it's only recruitment and not eliminate the lord in battle Ulbrich the Bordello. that is going to be a very difficult thing but we are going to go definitely for distribute grave gift and then we're going to do rising champions because uh, the skeletal is not skeletal is that also for skeletal and zombie units yeah that's probably also for spearmen uh, actually now we're going to go for this because we probably have to, go have to replace quite a few of them Alright, well, we can wait no longer, because the economy can't hold it. Follow me. Oh well. It's 50-50 is going to win according to uh, the computer. I'm going to find the medal and show you what this game is truly about. And hopefully you will enjoy it. We do have some special units, but so will they. Here they have, for instance, these foot squires. We don't want them to fight. Um, so I should uh, 
put one step back further. I already told you about Spearmen, they being anti-large and being good in that way. But each unit has different abilities. And here you see, for instance, that my Graveguard, this unit, is armored and shielded. And I do believe they're also anti-infantry. So they can wipe units out that um, don't have a lot of armor very easily. But these guys are armored. So it's a little bit of a game of chess. Some pieces have to go against some pieces. And they do a lot better if you just have a big old smackdown. Right now I have a huge army in comparison to them. And I need to make use of that. I should not like like... Oh, we're definitely going to gamble, because that's just 5 power for magic, and we hope we get a little bit more. Yeah, Reynold is with me. And that's interesting, by the way, that they say that. That already shows that he is actually from uh, Bretonia, because Reynold is normally the god of the Bretonians. But yeah, we have the Grave God over here, who's anti infantry army and shield, but I'm not anti-armor myself, so I really shouldn't fight armored dudes. So that is why we're going to have to spread things around. Now these guys are fear, cold, terror, and armor piercing. They are very good to surround, to put against the the uh, the squires. So we're gonna place them pretty close together, and we're gonna have we're gonna sacrifice tons of units here. But what we don't want to sacrifice are the really good units we have. These guys, who are anti-infantry, armored, and shielded. And these are armor piercing inferior and vanguard deployment, which means they can stand between this yellow and white line, like this. The other guys, eh, you see this little cross here. That doesn't matter on this map so much, but it doesn't matter on maps that have large, uh, vast rounds. Now, seeing my replenishment, my, my reinforcements are going to come over from here, I'm going to say, okay, we're going to focus with the biggest part of my army, on this little area. There we go. And uh, this is a battle ring ram, by the way, so we're gonna put it on the gate. And we're gonna put We're gonna do it a little bit in Chinese, we're gonna do it in reverse. This is my level my troop ones, they're gonna go and climb the wall over here. And we're gonna have some sacrificial lamps. After all, we're necromancers. We're not gonna... Not every unit is equally important, so to speak, to us. So we're gonna have some sacrificial lambs. We're going to climb walls and probably die. But they're just gonna shield whatever... Uh, uh, or keep busy whatever is on the rest of us. And make sure that they don't focus on everything that we have. That's more or less the idea of it. So we're gonna have some troops deployed... To Probably want to skill that wall. Alright. Start battle. Now, I will need some pauses. I know there are some very good YouTubers out there who don't need pauses. They're just they're just good on their own. And uh, basically they they no, they don't they don't need it. I, however, well, we're playing as Muzion, we're playing on hard, and I am going to need this. I'm sorry to say. Uh, so Definitely in the beginning, during combat, I will try to refrain from doing it too much. But, uh, yeah, um, you there. You there, because apparently I didn't plan this out properly. And you are the sacrificial lands that are going to go up there. And you are going to ride forward, trying to um, prevent getting damaged by these towers. These towers apparently are not even manned. So that's really, really good. So... Here are the are no, this is sword infantry. That's fine. I'm looking for the squires, spearmen at arms, spearmen at arms, battle pilgrims. Those are shielded, so that's okay, but not terribly, terribly, terribly bad. And you are you are the foot squires. Those are the ones I really don't want to waste these guys against. So that's good. They're gonna go here. That's fine. And these are guys are ethereal, and that means that they. Do not suffer as much damage. They have 80% physical resistance. So putting them up against uh, these guys should be fine. Because they don't have magical weapons as far as I know. No, they don't. You can see that by this blue little line over here. So uh, I think we're doing well the way we've just placed the army. And we are going to try and keep those foot squires a little busy. The sacrificial lance is going to go over here. Because we're going to hold up these, these archer units. And there is Kemmler with his force. So, Kemmler, sorry to say... 
move up and you yourself are going to because you have a way to re uh, you have the invocation of the hack the, the spell that regenerates undead their hit points which is of course amazing now uh, here we have total freedom so there is a chance we could actually take the guardhouse before we actually even have to break it down so that is a very very nice Come on, run for it! You can see the units. Up to this level of detail. Yes, I can. That's also because of the better camera mod. There they come running in. That level of detail is in this game. That, that is what is so awesome about it. There you go. Take them over. And because we were at an edge, they didn't use much of uh, their towers, so these units are all fine and dandy alive. This unit, as you can see, is being eaten up alive. As I already claimed, there is going to be the sacrificial lamb. Please, Gemler, behind your skeleton troops, man. You are too important to to die due to freaking fire of, of archers. That would be horrible. Now, he won't die, die, because he's a legendary lord. Legendary lords have some um, resistance to dying. Sword infantry frightened by enemy units. Did they... Where did their, where did their foot squires go? Ah, they're going all the way over here to help with that uh, invasion. Okay. That actually gives me opportunities. So, as you can already see, this castle tower is already ours, but we're going to take the gatehouse now. And we should now be... Yeah, there we go. You're going to fight those guys. 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 And apparently they got a little... And we, I'm very happy with this, because now we're going to get some, some spearmen up here in order to, to mess up their archers before they... Uh, could do much damage to us. And you... You can form up over here. There we go. There we go. Bring up the ladders. Oh, no, no. Not that. There you go. There you go. Move over there. Um, pause it again. I know, I know. I said I wouldn't. I would try and not do that. Ooh, Grave Guard got seriously splashed there by their trebuchet. Now we are undead, so we don't have moral in the way these guys have. They're they're not going to go running away when the battle goes wrong, but they will crumble when things go wrong. Meaning they their their necromatic binding will go down. And then I will lose them nonetheless, which is of course not what I want to have happen. Like these skeleton spearmen, they're already they're already getting destroyed. As these guys are getting destroyed, why are getting are we getting so destroyed? I'm a little surprised by that. Um New. Your first Why can I not do this? Oh, it's on a, the unit's on a war and then I'm not allowed to do it. Great. The gates are destroyed. That's awesome. I'm gonna get some spearmen in here. Mm, so here you can see these guys are, are crumbling. They're, they're being drained. We're losing the battle apparently on this front. Which is not what I would like to see, of course. But we are inside of the city. So some of our better units can now go there. You can... Yeah, this is bad. Now, I did not expect at all that we would have all the units survive. This is a, a crazy attack plan. It's a crazy forward push for expansion. 
Uh, you guys really need to go up on the wall. This is not going well. What is destroying me here? These are just foot squires. Damage is stained. It's the battle pilgrims probably that are causing the, uh, the issue here. And there I see... What is the... What are these? Sword infantry. Sure. Go there. What is... What is over here at the end? Knights of the Realm? Those are really annoying. The and the field trebuchet. The field trebuchet the dogs could definitely carry, but not the, the Knights of the Realm. Yeah, you're about to die, but that is just the sacrificial lamb then. Mmm... I just hope these archers are finally getting what's coming to them. Destroy them. Alright. Rear charge time. Uh. These guys, as you saw, they're on horseback. They're trying to run away from my units. Smart tactic, because I don't have it. There, my units crumbled. These guys are dying on the wall. I'm gonna pull them out. They have 80% physical resistance, but they're not holding up. Um, these are anti-infantry. So they would smack through this line like crazy, but... And these guys are armor-piercing. I really wish I could get some units on the, to the ground and start using on my Invocation of Nahak. To start doing some serious trouble here. Uh, no, I want you to... You seem to be clumped up without doing much. Mountain Yeoman. There we go. Go forward. Search forward. Now is the time. Then we can cast some invocation on the heck and do a lot better. What are you doing? You man at arm pull arms. This fight is going our way. You guys need to pull out now. Because you just ran yourself into trouble. Pull out, pull out, pull out. Come on. Get out. Oh, please don't die. Please don't die. I mean, I don't like these hounds as a unit very much, but uh, I don't want them to necessarily unnecessarily suffer. Here, this should kill you, because I don't know why you did that, that chase. There you go. Your binding sucks right now. You are going to support this. Why are you standing still over here? You guys get off the wall. I think we're at least getting past the wall, so we're starting already to do very, very well with that regard. Um, yeah, this unit is dying out. Oh, come on, really? I, I, I mean, I don't like him, but I don't want him to completely die out. Come on! Oh, they're being attacked by uh, the, the trebuchet. That's why they're dying so much. And why they're being so unhappy. Right, I can understand that one. Um, this is always a little annoying how you have to place units. There you go. Uh, you. Mountain Yeoman. We really should support that fight. can't. Uh, my spell, I'm too far out of range for that spell. Okay, start getting off the walls. Because that allows me to do... Unit has been wiped out. I'm losing this, this fight over here and that's mainly to these battle programs. 
And the Foot Squires. Um, they're also over here. Ah, that explains a lot. But the Foot Squires have lost so much damage that my sacrificial lambs have done what they should they should do. And you guys are going to run to Kemmler. Because if Kemmler can... Come on, be... Whoa, 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 whoa! The tower is not ours? Oh, of course not, it isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they're probably gonna die out. No, okay, I'm gonna lose the werewolves. That's annoying, but it's just the way it's gonna be. That's just the way it's gonna be. Um, you. Are these guys still active? Yes, they are. These are the battle pilgrims. Good. Or good. Not really, but... Camelot's at least here. I can't see him or something? Well, at least losing the heck here now, because we're finally on the freaking wall, so we can finally heal a little bit. One of the major abilities of vampires to heal their units in combat. Uh. Well, Kemmler's side is at least uh, doing well. The werewolves have died. I should probably have kept them here. here. What is happening over here? They just came back and nobody is paying attention to that? Alright. Uh, come on. Get in there. And we've put our lord into the against these battle pilgrims. Hopefully that is going to change how it's going to work over here. Here is everything is running. Everything is running on the left flank. You, into the back of the grill relic. Boom. These are Knights Errant. Knights Errant are not too bad to fight. Knights Errant are anti-infantry, they're not the Knights of the Realm. Which are anti-large, which would be much worse. But I am going to pull this back, and I am going to put up a line of, of spearmen over here. Those might be infantry, but... These units are too important to, for, for me. Get out of there! I mean, we are winning, but we are not done yet. Uh, how is this relic relinquy doing? Uh, it's nearly that. Oh, we, well, we are off the walls. You guys are still on the walls. You don't want to fight. You're the pussies. Actually, we still have a small little unit that's dying over here, but that's fine. Oh, really? Fine. Fight that. Fight over here. Where am I? Heal up these guys. Because this is crazy. And... Oh, this is not a lord or a hero, of course. We can't use that ability. This is because I'm a duelist. I have that ability. Alright! Spearmen! I have to say, these Bretonians, they're being nasty! Uh, you guys, go back in. Oops, I totally forgot that I put you outside of the walls, I have to admit. Well, these guys are, are dying out. Gives us a moment to do a rear charge. I think we're winning. I mean, the power, of, the power of balance is flipping in our favor. There we go. You guys, move forward. You, you're just gonna wait until these guys come off the wall. You're gonna um, protect Kemmler from a, a, a back attack. And we're just gonna leave it at that. Uh, getting off the walls was like the best thing that happened to us because it allowed us to use the invocation of the heck now all of a sudden. Ooh, and there you saw what, what one charge of the Knights of the Realm did to my Spearman unit over there. 
They did not enjoy. But we are now attacking from the back there as well. I don't think they will survive. These guys, as soon as they see me attacking, they flee. They have, like, no way in hell. And there is the victory as we charge from the back from all sides. And battle! And there it is. The victory of us. It's a Pyrrhic victory. We uh, lost more than they did, but we had to climb all these walls. And we did... But the worst thing is we did lose a special unit. But now we have the province, and I think it's worth it. Besides, we are undead. We can raise more than enough, and our army was too large for our economy anyways. And because they're all in the town, those guys that escaped, it doesn't matter. They are all dead. And we are gonna loot and occupy. Good. There we go, Legendary Lord, income from Vampire Crypts and Vampire Keeps, and we got the Screaming Banner. There we go, we have the province. Now definitely that will have diminished our rank well, up from 1 to 9, so that is definitely a decrease of epical proportions. And because we did the loot and sack, we got cash immediately, but we also have like a huge amount of unrest in fact we're gonna have a rebellion the next turn so look forward to that but it does actually allow us to do this Ooh, that isn't i think i first one of them build rebuilt the port yeah that seems like the better idea and we he has been able to uh regain and he is gonna go with the hunger first he has gained an a level and we have still more or less a 20 stack. We, we do lack one of those units, those those nice hounds. We lost them. I did do that stupidly in front of their towers where it was still theirs. I thought we had it under control, but no, that was of course the region where we did not have it under control, so I kind of killed them off. Although they were already dying anyways, and I don't know if they would have replenished quickly enough. Um, yeah. You're gonna sit there for a while, I think that's good. You're gonna hire them so that you have extra experience on these troops. And we're gonna have to build this up. Um, and we're gonna keep the 20, 20 stack alive. And after that, it's just really building up this, this holding. Because if we don't do that, we, we we're down and out for the count as well. So, I mean, we gotta have something. But the most important thing is, now we can do public order increase. No, public order increase is not gonna help enough for this public order problem. We're gonna can do the growth and vampire corruption, or we can do the tax rate or unit experience for all units recruited and local recruitment capacity. We could do that just for this unit right now. But I don't think... Oh wait, it's gonna take in, into account next turn anyway, so that's not gonna help. We're gonna go with the vampire corruption. Because one of the things why we have lack of unrest is the lack of vampire corruption. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to hire one of these. That's enough to get for the next turn. Lionel upgraded. And I am very curious to know if you like this... Mm, this... Uh, well, this... Possibly this game and possibly this opening move. Perhaps I was completely dumb and it should have attacked Bordelon. Uh, do let me know in the comments. Do let me know what you think. I am always happy to hear from you. And uh, yeah, um, I'm going to make this... But as of late, I've had some time. So you know what? Let's make this uh, three times per week. Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. From now on, six episodes per week. At least if you will give me enough likes to let me know that you actually do like this. Because otherwise I'm going to do it here for nothing. Oh, ain't I a sneaky bastard saying that, huh? I say I thank you for watching. And remember, great peril yields great beauty.